Also developing tonight, a Republican congressman introduced legislation a few hours ago challenging the president's executive orders on health care. Now, first, President Obama, by himself, delayed the employer mandate for a whole year with just a stroke of a pen, and there was outrage about whether he could do that. Then, when the rollout started going south, the president came out last week and asked the insurance companies to ignore the federal regulations that were causing millions of Americans to get kicked off of their insurance plans. Once again, Congress said, hello. But when we did some digging, we found that then-candidate Obama exhibited a much different take on executive power when he was campaigning against President Bush, well, against what President Bush had done back in 2008. Listen to this. We've got a, a, a government designed by the founders so that there'd be checks and balances. You don't want a president who's too powerful or a Congress who's too powerful or a court who's too powerful. Everybody's got their own role. Congress's job is to pass legislation. The president can veto it or he can sign it. But what George Bush has been trying to do as part of his effort to accumulate more power in the presidency is he's been saying, well, I can basically change what Congress passed by attaching a letter saying, I don't agree with this part or I don't agree with that part. I'm going to choose to interpret it this way or that way. Uh, that's not part of his power. But this is part of the whole theory of George Bush that he can make laws as he's going along. Uh, I disagree with that. I taught the Constitution for 10 years. I believe in the Constitution and I will obey the Constitution of the United States. Wow. Joining me tonight is author of the bill trying to rein in the president, Representative Ron DeSantis. He's a member of the Oversight Committee and a former federal prosecutor, Congressman. What a thing to listen to then-candidate <laughs> Barack Obama versus President Obama. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I'll tell you, he's changed his tune now. You mentioned, Megan, he rewrote the employer mandate in July. He changed the date of the statute. It was very clear. And then with this grandfather issue, he said, I'm going to extend the grandfather clause to some of these plans that were uh, people got after 2010. Well, he can't do that by executive order. Congress can do that by statute. And in fact, we tried to make statutory changes in both those instances, and he's threatened to veto our bills. So it's a very odd position he's taken. He doesn't want Congress doing it legislatively, even though we have the legislative authority, but he'll just go ahead and make similar changes changes on his own and ultimately that's not the way the Constitution is structured. I believe in the Constitution. I taught the Constitution for 10 years and I will not be doing an end run around Congress. What can be done? I mean, what what can be done? I mean, is, what what happens with your bill? So my bill is basically uh, the House is going to express its disapproval about that. So we're on record as saying we don't think that's constitutional. Now, that doesn't solve all the problems. But the problem, Megan, was no one was saying anything. And so I felt that if we just remained silent, then his actions would basically become part of the standard operating procedure going forward. And so I don't want to have this precedent set, not only for this president, but for other presidents. But even in the news today, there's talk that he may allow individuals to go around healthcare.gov and get subsidies going directly to the insurers, and you can't do that in the statute. We know he wants to do a union bailout. of so, so there are all these things that are going to be coming down the pike. So we in Congress have got to make our voice heard. And my hope is, is that some of my friends in the other party will put the constitutional duties they have above their partisan self-interest and join with me to tell the president that he can't rewrite laws. What, what is going to happen when the shoe is on the other foot and there is a Republican in the White House and he starts doing these things. I mean, if, well, if the Democrats control, you know, one or both houses of Congress at that point, they're going to rue the day they allowed this kind of expansion of executive power. Can you imagine if Mitt Romney had been elected, took office January 20th and said, you know, those fiscal cliff tax increases that you did, Congress, I disagree with them. So I'm going to suspend the increase in the capital gains tax for one year because I don't think the economy could handle it. Um, I don't think Democrats would accept that. And the media in Washington would not accept that. They are not as interested in holding this particular president accountable for whatever reason. It's, it's amazing uh, to see that clip. We're going to post it on our Facebook page uh, so people can, can look and listen for themselves at a different sounding uh, Barack Obama just a few years ago. Representative Ron DeSantis, thanks for being here. Anytime.